Hi, everybody. Hi. Great to be with you again. Thank you for joining us again. Yeah, it's great. What I thought I'd share this morning, Connie has some things to share. What I was thinking to share was something that came out of remembering how for so many years and actually still, people often come to us asking us to tell them what to do, what to eat, to deal with a health condition or, or lose weight. And that's what we always used to do because that's what we saw the answer was. If you've got a health condition, then eat these foods and your body will restore itself. It's designed to regenerate. It's built into the system. So just eat these foods and they would do it and they'd have great results. Pain would go away, excess weight would disappear, they'd get off their meds, everything was happy. And then sometimes we'd see some of them six or 12 months later and the weight was back on, the conditions had flared up again. And at least with those who we were familiar with enough to be rather frank and say, well, what happened? They would always explain it was the same thing. They had simply gone back to their old diet and lifestyle. Old habits. habits. Old habits. Yeah. Uh, as a means of dealing with their life. I mean, isn't that why we have the habits that we have? It's, it's in a, 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 a way to deal with what's showing up in our lives. An attempt. An attempt, yeah. And so we saw that there was something missing. And uh, as we've mentioned before, we feel in the last few years, we've really found a key. And so what that is, is that if we try to, I'm going to back it up a little bit. If we try to live our lives by rules, by knowing what to do, if we tell people you eat this and you do that and you'll no longer have arthritic pain, well, that may be true but it's kind of not the way life works, is it? I spent lots of years trying to feel safe by following rules. And when that came to a relationship, it didn't work very well. I would try to figure out what would, I was gonna say what would keep Connie happy, but I think what I was trying to figure out is what won't upset Connie. Or even more, what will allow you to feel safe? But I didn't see it that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it that way. So I would constantly be on the lookout for, does she get upset when this happens or that happens? And then I can avoid this. And I just kept kind of eliminating things that I would want to do. I would turn into the zombie. <laughs> I would still it's be true. functional. I could make a meal. I could make money, I, you know. But in terms of our relating, I was always trying to live by rules I had made up to try to feel safe and secure and, and in a harmonious relationship. Well, how do you think that worked? Not good. <laughs> Fortunately, I was married to someone who wouldn't live with a zombie. <laughs> and literally, she would take me sometimes by the, by the shirt and say, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd kind of shake out of it because, see, that would then be my new rule, be present. <laughs> and I could do that for a while, but as a rule, I couldn't do it because I wasn't accessing just the, the wisdom I have of how to relate to life in any given moment. So what we've added to our program now that has made such a difference, that has made eating that has made having a healthy relationship with food sustainable. What we've added is the understanding that my experience of life doesn't come from anybody or anything else. What happens in my life isn't what makes me feel the way I feel. And that is what so often drives unhealthy habits and unhealthy relationship with food. In the same way it drove an unhealthy relationship with Connie, trying to live by rules and trying to feel safe and, and comfortable in my life. Lots of people, myself included, would reach for food to feel different. And when we begin to see that it's not the circumstance that's creating the way I feel, but rather 
the meaning that I'm giving to the circumstance or what I'm thinking about the circumstance and not the circumstance itself. I begin to see that I'm always experiencing, my experience of life is my moment to moment thinking, the feelings produced, created by my thinking about what's going on. So now in my relationship, if I feel upset because Connie asked me to do something, let's say, and I feel upset, my knee jerk response is, she's making me feel this way. And if she's making me feel this way, the only way out of it is to get her to change. And you know, I've tried that, it doesn't work. <laughs> but now that feeling of upset, even though it can trigger kind of the old idea to go into the old habits, recognizing that this feeling is not produced by Connie. This feeling is being produced by the meaning that I'm giving to whatever she's asking me to do, say. And when I see that, I start to settle down because I recognize that trying to change my environment isn't taking me where I want to go. And what's interesting is that when I recognize that it's the meaning I'm giving to what she's saying, basically, I'm when I get upset, it's usually that she's saying something that I interpret as I did something wrong. I made a mistake. I'm lazy. I'm a slob. <laughs> My interpretation. You know, all these ideas I have about not being enough. I guess that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I hear something she says, and it triggers an insecurity. And in trying to feel, deal with the feeling, if I think it's her, I've got to change her. But when I see, oh, it's my insecure thinking, and nothing really has to change, my mind starts to settle. We've often used that snow globe analogy, where when I get in a busy mind, it's hard to think clearly. It's hard to really have good solutions. Um, really viable solutions in a situation. When I see that my feelings are being produced by my thinking about it, the meaning I'm giving it, my mind starts to settle like the snow globe. If I put the snow globe down, it settles. And suddenly I have a whole different set of options to deal with what's going on. Like, oh, not right now, honey, I'm busy. <laughs> or I could do that. Let's do that together. Yeah, I mean, it's just so different instead of, would you get out of my face? <laughs> think about it. You think it's made a difference in our relationship? Mm -hmm. It really has. So bringing it back to the food and the sustainable relationship of a healthy relationship with food. When I understand that the feelings I'm having that have me reaching for food when I'm not hungry, often don't have anything to do with that circumstance, but rather the meaning that I'm giving to that circumstance. My feelings settle and move on through the shift. And suddenly that need to have that food disappears. Dissolves. Dissolves. So yeah. That's my rant for today. Great, good. Well, you know, for a long time, I've been concerned about the reports of arsenic in brown rice. And today I read an article by Ocean Robbins that was very helpful in how to get rid of the high arsenic content that's in many of our rices today. The first thing to consider is buy brown rice from California. That's your best bet because rices from the eastern U.S. or southern like Texas and Louisiana. those, yeah, Louisiana, they are the ones that had cotton fields growing that created a lot of arsenic in the soils that rice is planted in. Next is a cooking technique. Four cups of water to one cup of rice put in a pan, just the water itself, and bring it to a boil. 
Then add the rice, keep boiling for five minutes, pour the water off, put the drained rice back on the stove and add two cups of water to one cup of rice. Just and the usual yeah, ratio. Usual yeah, just ratio. Just cook it as usual. Yeah. Later on. And then cook it up. And that ha helps to remove over 50% of the arsenic in brown rice. So I wanted to share that with you because I've been on the lookout for a way to really reduce that content. And so today for recipe, we want to give you a foodable, which is brown rice as the base, beans or lentils, lots of cooked veggies, and some raw. So like whatever you want to do for raw veggies is great. I like to do cooked greens as my cooked and usually I'll put zucchini or string beans or asparagus, something else in there or carrots. carrots. Yeah. And then for the raw, I love sprouts. They're the best mm -hmm. for the raw, I think. And then over the top goes a beautiful nut and seed dressing. So delicious. So. You'll get the recipe for all of that today. Give it a try. It's a really filling meal that you love eating because it tastes great. It tastes great. And, and, and it's just so satisfying. It's just got all the components. Yeah. Yeah. Must but, be why the Buddha liked it. Right. <laughs> that could be. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Yeah.